So you've been watching all kinds of videos on the internet about filmmaking and you're ready to jump in. So you grab a camera, set it to a log profile and start shooting. You're shooting all this footage and then you get to the edit and you realize this footage looks like sh**. This footage looks like sh**. You try to color it as best as you can, but you can only get it looking so good and you come to the conclusion that your footage is trash. Why does this look so bad? You exclaim to yourself. I see people on the internet with the same camera and the same settings and their footage looks incredible and this looks oh, like trash. It's because log footage sucks to work with. The fuck said that? When I first started shooting log, I grabbed my camera and tried. Then I tried again and again and again and again and again and again. <laughs> Only to come to the conclusion that I suck. Everything around my whole creative process was up in flames. Big utility, of course. Now fast forward, after all that tedious practice, I could finally get my footage from looking like this to looking like this. My name is Josh Stoops and last night I ate an entire box of Pop-Tarts because I live alone and no one was here to stop me. But that's not why you're here. You're here to learn how to shoot and log better and not suck as much. I should preface this by saying like, you don't suck, log sucks. It doesn't have to. So let's get into it. In video, the term log is short for logarithmic. Log in this context means that the relationship between the light and your camera sensor is not linear, but rather logarithmic. Does that make sense? In log, the brightness and contrast values of your image are compressed, resulting in a really flat, desaturated, ugly looking footage like this. It's so depressing. However, this lack of contrast and saturation gives you more flexibility in post-production when color grading, which is where log footage really shines. If you are new to video, shooting in log can be a little bit intimidating, but it doesn't have to once you understand the basics of shooting in log, and that's what I'm gonna go over right now. Exposure is always important, but it's even more important in log profiles. The image on your camera's screen isn't going to accurately reflect your final image, so it's important to have a waveform monitor or a histogram to be able to check and make sure you dialed in your exposure correctly. And in this color profile, you're actually supposed to overexpose. And what I found is that if you overexpose your subject by two to three stops, you'll have a better final looking image. And if the darkest part of your image is underexposed by five to six stops, you're good. And if the brightest part of your image is overexposed by six to eight stops, you're good. Log profile has a wide dynamic range to where you could bring all those together and even it out. As long as your subject is exposed properly, and your highlights don't go over eight stops and your shadows don't go under six stops, you should have a pretty solid image. Again, you want to expose your subject between two and three stops over what you would normally expose. And a little bonus tip here is you wanna make sure you're in focus. Your screen looks real muddy and real flat. Sometimes it's hard to tell what's in focus and what's not. Turn on focus peaking, or if you have a camera where you can really trust the autofocus, use the autofocus. If you're a manual focus enthusiast, turn on focus peaking or do a digital zoom so you could really dial in the focus. I've shot so many things in log and realized later that my footage is out of focus because everything looks really soft on the camera. Now that you know how to expose your shots, go out and get shots. Get shots in all kinds of different lighting scenarios. Shoot indoors, shoot in the shadows, shoot outside in direct sunlight. Shoot half a shot in sunlight and half a shot in the shadows. Shoot in front of a window. Get comfortable shooting log in all different lighting scenarios. After a while, it'll become muscle memory. You'll wake up and look out a window and know exactly what settings you'll need on your camera to get the best footage. Yeah, today's gonna be an ISO 640 F2.8 at 24 millimeters with a four stop ND filter on. I'll probably set my white balance to 4200 and shoot perpendicular with the sun around 4 p.m. to get nice shadows. And then I'll go to Taco Bell and get a couple beefy five layer burritos later. It's gonna be a good day. And once you got your footage, it is time to color grade. And this is my least favorite part. I know some of you love color grading and color correction. 
it's not for me. I tend to dial in the color I like and then save that preset per my camera settings. So next time I shoot with those camera settings and that lighting scenario, I have a preset. So I got presets for sunny days, cloudy days, rainy days, nighttime, daytime. I got a preset for this office when I'm shooting warm colors. I got a preset for when I'm shooting cold colors in here. Got presets for everything. So depending on what log you're shooting in, whether you're shooting Sony S-Log, Canon C-Log, Panasonic V-Log, uh, even if you're shooting Blackmagic B-Raw, they have Rec. 709 converters that convert your camera's log into Rec. 709 footage. And this actually makes it a much easier color space to work with so you don't have that muddy look. When I first discovered this and I learned that you could just convert it straight to Rec. 709, my mind was blown. I don't know, I feel like this is something I should have known, I didn't know. I was just trying to color grade strictly off of the log footage, which you can do, but it's it's way more difficult. Um, it's so much easier to just convert it to Rec. 709 and then go from there. So first tip when it comes to color grading, find the Rec. 709 converter for your camera's log convert it to Rec. 709 and then start color grading. My philosophy with filmmaking is doing something tedious over and over again until it doesn't suck. And that's the same thing when it comes to color grading. I will work on one shot for two, three hours at a time, finally get an image that I like and I'll save that preset so next time I have a similar lighting scenario, I have the color profile I like to add to it. I'm still practicing and learning myself. My footage isn't gonna be the best footage you're gonna see here on the internet, but if you wanna learn with me, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time. Stay creative.